This video is about my uh, early days in the neurosurgery ward and trying to come to terms with just what had happened to me as well as dealing with everyday life and the needs of everyday life like going to the toilet. So <clears throat> imagine if you can, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting in a hospital bed, <clears throat> you have a tube coming out of your head here, you have a tube coming out of the back of your neck here, you have an IV in this arm, you have something else going on in this arm, I'm still not too sure to this day what that was, and you have a SAT monitor on this finger, and you have a catheter fitted. I need to go to the toilet. Not number ones, number twos. Press the buzzer, nurse comes. Can I help you? Yes, I, uh, the old bowels move. I need to uh, write. Okay, just one second. I'll go and get the commode. The what? The commode. Okay. So, nurse disappears. And then <laughs> nurse appears wheeling this trots between a supermarket trolley and a wheelchair <laughs> that desperately needs oiling. There's three other guys in the ward. They're all looking around, seeing what the noise is. <laughs> right. Let me put the brakes on and uh, then we'll get you get you on it. <laughs> right, fine. So all these cables going everywhere have to be sort of pulled over to one side. I try and manoeuvre myself. I really haven't got any strength. The whole world is still doing this. This is still going on, by the way. Manage to move and manoeuvre myself to the side of the bed and with the nurse's help, <clears throat> manage to get onto the commode, which effectively now I can see it closer up, is less like a supermarket trolley and wheelchair combined and more like a wheelchair and toilet combined. So there's kind of like a toilet seat on it, which is what you sit on. And yes, it's, it's, a, it's a hole. And with all my tubes attached to the various things that are also on wheels, so I've got two pillars of, I don't know what they're called, stands, you know, that are on casters that also have all the bags hanging off it for your IV and the drip and all the rest of it. One of those in either hand as the nurse wheels me across the ward, very elegantly, I have to say, very fashionable, to the toilet. And the toilet hasn't been designed terribly well, even though it's quite a new uh, wing of the hospital in as, in as much that there isn't quite enough room for the commode and a nurse at the same time. So the nurse has to kind of line me up and then back me in. So I'm backed in until I'm backed in over the toilet. So where I'm sitting is a hole and then probably a foot below where my bottom is is the top of the toilet. So it's kind of, you hope that your aim is true as Elvis Costello once sang, and that, uh, you know, what you're producing is going to uh, be taken by gravity in, you know, the right area. And uh, sitting there doing your business, bizarrely went, went through my head was uh, being in a, being in a Lancaster bomber over Germany, circa 1942. Bombs away, Skipper! How's it looking down there? It's a bit messy, but I think we hit the target. Kind of thing. Now, in my head, yesterday, I was fully functioning, able to go to the toilet on my own, didn't need a commode, didn't need any help, didn't have any tubes in him, didn't have a catheter inserted. Fine. So I've gone from fairly able to not able at all. 
and I don't know why. I don't understand what's going on. Yes, I've been told I've had brain surgery. I don't really know why. I don't really know for what reason. I've been told I've had a stroke. I don't really know what a stroke is, to be honest. So I'm very confused. I'm trying to deal with the here and now, what I'm dealt with, what I'm looking at, bloke sitting opposite me when I'm back in bed, bloke over there. Who is he? Why is he here? Hello, mate. I'm Andy. Who are you? I'm Dave. Right. What, what? Have you had a stroke? No, no, no. Brain tumour. Oh, right. Yeah, I've just had my third operation. Been told it's inoperable. I've got three months left. Jesus Christ. Right. What What do you say to that? What do you... <laughs> You're there thinking, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Is my life over? Will I get back to normal? I don't know. And I'm talking to a guy sitting opposite me, not 12 feet away, who's got three months left to live. Kind of puts it in perspective. And the guy opposite me who had a an inoperable brain tumour, um, I remember seeing him get in a wheelchair for the first time. And I paid particular attention to what he was doing and how he was doing it because I was sitting in there with all these tubes coming out of my head and whatever, thinking to myself, I need to watch this. I need to understand how you get in and get out of a wheelchair because I'm going to have to be doing this. So I need to watch. I need to learn. Maybe there's some little techniques, some little tweaks, some little ways of learning and I need to pay attention and watch so I did and as it turned out a couple of weeks later three weeks later I left hospital in a, in a wheelchair so who are these other guys guy to my right and he, he's up about and moving about got wild hair all over the place got a beard his eyes are really wide and all the rest of it and got a 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 comes over to me huh. right gonna gonna get a get a get a get a get a get a get okay where the fuck am i what is going on bloke over there in the corner there's nothing going on there not moving not saying anything i can tell he's breathing and he's chest moving up and down no monitors no tubes no machines no beep boop boop beep boop boop go nothing nothing just just a bloke in a bed comatose not moving okay here we are good 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 oh fuck it he can say oh fuck it but he can't the rest of it is gonna good Here we are then. As it turned out, the uh, guy who was gonna uh, gonna 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 had actually had a stroke as well. And what had happened? He'd had a hemorrhagic stroke. He'd had a, a bleed on the brain. And in order to uh, get him right, what they had to do was carry out an operation, drain all of the fluid out of his brain, which meant that his brain settled at the back on the skull and that affected his speech his speech came back three or four days later once the fluid csf the C cerebrospinal fluid had built up in his brain again and supported his brain and took that pressure off what turned out to be areas of his brain that were affecting his speech so poor guy was going around trying to communicate with me he could understand he could hear what was going on he could see what was going on he was compass mentis, but he can talk. He all he could do was gonna 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 gonna, and that was it for several days. Poor guy. It's a big thing to process mentally, emotionally, because you don't understand what the hell has gone on, and you're trying desperately to understand and get up to speed and work it out and all the rest of it. 
but it's kind of like you've just been taken from the world that you know, the world that you are happy in, the world that you understand, dropped in some kind of alternate reality where nothing makes any sense. Everything that you knew before doesn't make any sense at all. It's all gone. And eventually the drains came out and that was okay. The catheter was removed, brilliant. Didn't need any tubes anywhere, great. Still had to go to the toilet on the commode, but at least getting in and out of bed and in and on the thing and off the thing and back into bed again was a lot easier because I wasn't getting tangled up in all these damn leads. But then we're going to move you from ICU. We're going to go to the stroke ward and start your rehabilitation. Oh, OK. So that was all arranged, taken to the stroke ward. Mr. Toby, darling, ah, nice to see you. <laughs> Who are you? I'm blah, 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 senior nurse, you know. So because I've been on the stroke ward for a couple of days, all the staff there knew me. I didn't know them. <laughs> I had no idea who they were at all. Complete strangers, lovely people coming up and talking to me. Sorry, who are you? Oh, don't you remember me? I'm the nurse that blah, blah, blah. No. Don't you remember me? I'm the doctor that when you first came in here, I didn't. No. Oh, we had, we had a laugh. You like cricket, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a laugh about England. Uh, did we? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> nice to meet you. So on the stroke ward, it's like, right, you are going to have occupational therapy and physiotherapy. We've got a little gym down the corridor. Fantastic. Great, because I've been... I didn't say this, but in my head, I said, I've been in, a, I, in the neurosurgery ward for a few days now. And all I'm thinking about is how am I going to get back to work? How am I going to start drumming again? Because this hand's a bit, I can't pick stuff up. So if I demonstrate with my handkerchief, I had a sheet on me like this when I was in neurosurgery. And I wanted to pull it up. So with my right hand, I would simply, between my thumb and first finger, do that. So with my left hand, I couldn't do that. I couldn't grip. I had no grip between my thumb and forefinger. It just did that. So every time I went to try and pick the sheet up, it. So I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to hold a drumstick? I can't. I can't hold a sheet. How the hell am I going to hold a drumstick? Play a drum kit get back to work how can I teach people how to play drums if I can't hold a drumstick all of this is going through my head but occupational therapy that must be something to do with work right occupation all therapy o o work therapy some kind of that's going to help me play drum good right fantastic physiotherapy yeah I understand about that getting your joints moving again all the rest of it fine so day one, I'm escorted down the corridor. I can't really walk. I'm shuffling. I'm just, I can't pick the feet off the ground. I'm just like that. And I've got a nurse either side of me, or the, should I say the physiotherapist and a nurse one side, and they're holding me upright because I'm wanting to do that all the time. Everything's going left. The force is pulling me left. So I'm having to kind of walk like this so that I don't end up going that way. I'm having to counterbalance. So two people either side of me and I'm shuffling 50 metres down the corridor to the uh, the physio room. Yeah, and that'll be another story about what happened in there. <laughs>